Welcome to Portugal, former home of Pablo Aymar, Falcao, Hulk, James Rodriguez, Di Maria and Cristiano Ronaldo. But to fully understand how Portuguese football works, you'll first have to know who the big three are. So yes, the big three are Porto, Sporting Lisbon and Benfica. They've won every single championship since the year 2000 when Boa Vista won and they don't look like holding up anytime soon. The closest another team's got to doing this is Braga in 2009 where they finished second behind Benfica. You can probably see where I'm going if you've watched any of my other videos. These are the three easiest teams that you can use for a career mode save. So you have the big three. Porto, Benfica, Sporting. You have the best of the rest, Braga, Rio Ave and Vitoria. And then you have the next level of teams, the Road to Glory, Tondela and Farense. The real difficulty with the Road to Glory teams is there's not a lot of money in Portuguese football if you're not winning. You have to try and keep it cheap, you have to try and keep it long contracts for not much wages. It takes a lot of effort to get a good player to agree to these terms, so a lot of the teams have a lot of low rated players filling up the squads with one or two high rated players in their teams. So let's get started with the squad rules as we always do. So it's not very strict in Portugal, you have to have a squad of less than 53 players which I don't think FIFA can even handle and then you have to have a maximum of 6 players making their debut per year. You can have 0, you can have 5, it doesn't matter as long as it's less than 6. This only counts for players that are under 19, anyone older than that you can have as many as you want if it's their debut but you can only have six teenagers making their debut per season. So whereabouts is a Portuguese team likely to find these young players? Of course, Portugal is the most common nationality, with over 700 Portuguese players registered in the league. The next highest is Brazil with 149. I think this is probably the highest second nationality that I've ever seen doing one of these videos, and I can't imagine there's too many leagues that would uh, triple this. Second place is France with 14, Spain with 14, Colombia with 12 and Argentina with 11. So these are the nations you're going to want to scout with your youth academy. Brazil of course being one of the better nations in the whole game to scout, they have some of the highest rated players off the bat. Looking through the existing squads on day one, there's kind of a limit to each player's rating. The Champions League players are never really above 84, Tellers for Porto and Pizzi for Benfica were both 84 rated I believe. So if you try and keep it to this as long as you're in the Champions League and sell any players that you get bids on above this, you'll keep it realistic. For Europa League, I'd advise 81 rated, because that's about where you'd see Braga's players. Mid tables, 77, and if you're at the bottom of the table, I would probably avoid signing anyone over 74 until you can climb a bit higher. Most of the teams in the league do have at least one exciting youngster. Some of the most standout players at the minute are Nuno Mendes from Sporting, Darwin Nunez from Benfica, Fabio Vieira at Porto, Angel Gomez at Boa Vista, Thiago Almeida at Tondela, and finally Maddy Cueta if you choose to do the road to glory as Firenze. Unfortunately, none of the teams in the league, not even the big three, have a stadium in game. I believe they're all exclusively licensed by Pez, so if you feel like playing as a stadium, maybe it's worth playing on Pez instead. There are one or two generic stadiums that are clearly modelled on the Portuguese style of building, but other than these, you're going to have to try and hope that you don't play the same stadium two or three times in a row. For realistic signings, the big three will want to try and get the best talent out of South America and Central America. So some of these signings could include Thiago Almelda from Velez, Rafael Barre from River Plate, and Augustin Erzi from Banfield. For the rest of the league, you're also going to want to be scouting South America, but you probably can't go for the upper echelon of talent that's coming from there. You'll want to scout South America and Africa, because that's where most players in the league are from, but you'll also want to focus on loaning young Spanish talent from the Knights of Valencia or Barcelona if they have any available. A Portuguese league can be very fun in my opinion. I did a couple of saves as Santa Clara because I did enjoy looking at their kit in the past, and building up slowly with the lack of transfer money is pretty fun. Also focusing on the youth academy is fairly realistic because that's what most teams in Portugal do do. 
There's always a bit of challenge trying to qualify for the Europa League with the talent that's in the league already. And there's always the end game boss of the big three who you're going to have to struggle to overcome to get to the Champions League. I always enjoyed these bigger teams in one league. For example, the Danish leagues got Copenhagen, which are always a bit of a challenge if you play there. Whereas some leagues it can be a bit of a rollover when you get going, such as the Polish league where, where there aren't many teams that are actually very good after a certain point. So that's my quick guide on the Portuguese league. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something about the Portuguese league, even if it's just the nicknames for the big three. There aren't many teams out there that have the nickname the Dragons. I think that's a pretty cool one. Um, but yeah, unfortunately no stadiums. There is a lot of challenge in the league, even if it's just bringing Sporting and Porto back to the same level that Benfica are currently at. That could be a fun challenge. Of course, Road to Glory is always fun. And trying to make Braga on the same level as the big three, maybe try and make it the big four. That would be another good challenge. If you have liked this video, I would appreciate you subscribing, especially if you want to see more videos like this in the future. If you have any leagues that you think I should cover in future videos, let me know as well. And I hope you all have a happy new year. Cheers, bye.